Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and today I've got game number one of this best of one. It's a ladder game, it's a ZVZ, and this is the first cast that I have done from my new apartment. So I hope that the sound levels are all good, the acoustics of the building are pleasurable to your ears. And more importantly, it means that from tomorrow, I don't actually have it yet, but from tomorrow I should have super fast internet, which means I'm going to start streaming and I'm so excited about this. It's going to be StarCraft stuff, my normal cast stuff, ton of other things as well. Um, other games as well will definitely be coming up on my channel, so make sure you check out twitch.tv forward slash maddles because, yeah, streaming's gonna be coming up. Hit that follow button. Now, enough about that and a bit more about this game. Zerg vs Zerg, and it's two really good ones at that. Up in the top right position, and oh, hang on, hang on, we've got a nine pool coming down here. Just thought I'd bring that to everyone's attention. But yeah, up in the top right position, spawning as the blue Zerg player, it is none other than the Scottish hero, Johnny Rico. And his opponent down in the bottom left, the Red Zerg from Root, it is Kane. Now, Nine Pool up against Johnny Rico, who is droning a lot. Johnny Rico, is he going to be going up for a 15 hatch? He's ordered 14, he's waiting for the next drone. The next lava is about to pop out. Is he going to wait and make the spawning pool? That is the big question. There's another lava. No, he's gone up to 15. Meanwhile, Kane is 11 over 10. He went for the extractor trick in order to squeeze out another drone. But no, Rico is getting the spawning pool down first. That's really important for him because now any early zergling pressure that could be coming out will be easier to defend than a hatch first. But if Johnny Rico follows this up with a hatch, which is quite a likely thing actually, may make it a little bit more awkward. We'll have to keep an eye out for exactly what comes down. But Kane already with those first six Zerglings rallied across the map. He's ready to apply a little bit of pressure. Eight Zerglings on their way down now. This is now a bit more than a little bit of pressure. You can see Rico, four workers ahead already. That influences the income quite substantially actually. If we take a look, 600 to about 500. It might not seem like a massive amount, but it is enough. However, Rico is invested in a natural base. The Overlord for Johnny now sees these Zerglings coming out. How is he going to be able to respond to that? Well, an extractor is still coming down. He's probably going to start banking up lava in order to get out a couple of additional Zerglings once this comes. Immediately two Zerglings on their way. Kane's Zerglings are still making their way forward, though Johnny Rico needs quite a few more out. The important thing is that this hatch stays up and not too many of the drones go down. If they don't, well, obviously Rico is going to be a little bit quite comfortably ahead. We've got a grand total Currently of 10 lings out for Kane. This hatchery taking a little bit of damage already. Rico may be forced to cancel it because that is a considerable amount of damage being done. And he's only got two Zerglings. I think the cancel is going to be forced now. Four lings cannot deal with that many. Cancel goes down, but Rico knows that he should still be slightly ahead in terms of the drone count. He's getting out a couple more defensive Zerglings. He's now sitting at six compared to ten. He's going to pull back the Queen Elite. The Spine Quarter also coming down because remember, Rico can see that there's no natural base. He's happy to cancel that as long as he's got the drones here still to just aid a bit more. Zerglings coming back down see the extractor being made by Johnny Rico's drone that was cancelled for making that hatchery so just trying to make sure that drone definitely dies but this is buying Rico time he's got the queen He's got 10 Zerglings himself, so he does have Defender's Advantage. He's looking absolutely fine, and straight away starts back to droning. He knows he's got enough Lings now, and that is just such good game sense from a quick read of exactly how many Zerglings came through by seeing all of the Overlords placed nicely. So Kane now forced to go back. Kane also does have, though, the Extractor coming down and the Baning there, so he's following this up with more one base aggression. But remember, Rico can see the natural base. He knows there's an expansion there, and Rico should be still getting a good amount of gas out himself. There we go, so he's got speed already coming down, and Rico now does have enough gas in order to get a baning nest when he wants to and start getting some banelings, depending on if he feels the need to. And there we go, the baning nest is coming down, but he still doesn't see an expansion. He's playing it safe, he's getting defensive banelings, but the work account is now actually in Kane's favour by a few eight more lings also coming out. This is going to be some very interesting holds coming down here. It's going to come down to some moon incredibly aggressive Ling Bling Micro. What Rico could be really good doing is bringing this queen and putting it on the ramp, doubling it up, making sure that Speedlings and Banelings can't punch through, and then he could afford to drone a little bit harder, and that would allow him to get an economical lead, but at the moment, 17 workers on each side. Johnny Rico about to grab three more, though. Creep spread starting to move forward. The advantage of this is just one, units can get there quicker, but two, a Spine Crawler can be brought further forward, and the Spine Crawler around here would be able to start picking off any Banelings that try to make their way through. A few Speedlings now, just one Wandering their way up for Kane. Gonna take a little peek about exactly what's happening. But 
already Zergen's getting forced back. Not sure if the Banings were seen, but quite a few speedlings there. In come a good group of Banings 4K now. He's got six of them. They're coming up the ramp. Oh, is this going to be able to get held? Well, defensive Banings nearly done. The Queen's doing a good job of trying to take some of these out. Good Baning connections there. Or Johnny Rico, he keeps one additional Baning up. But we see Kane already speeding in here with a good number of Zergen's. But can Johnny Rico get the sort of connection with the Baning that he so desperately requires? Even if these speedlings just keep running around, guess what? That means they're going to be coming up against the Queen. They're going to be coming up against the Spine Caller. And Kane now forced back. Johnny Rico with 10 more Zergings of his own. He's going for the counter aggression. He knows he came off well then. We can see from the resources lost, it was very well. 781 resources lost, all minerals. Oh, sorry, a couple of gas as well, 150 gas. Better 456 of Rico. Rico going to be very happy with that. Defensive paintings are coming down a drone as well. Kane is going to try and expand immense to mince of this. So he is going to be playing very, very bravely. More speedlings coming down though. Rico should have the speedling numbers at the moment on the low ground, at least. Up in the high ground, though, Kane is one more speedling ahead and some banelings. So Rico's taking his expansion, morphing in a couple of banelings of his own up on the high ground there. But we'll see the two banelings defensively. Wants to try and trigger a detonation. Can he do it? Not quite. Using a single speedling to kill a baneling or two. Two zerglings for a baneling is a perfectly good trade. That is the sort of thing that Rico's going to be looking for. He's got these two banelings. They can sneak their way forward. That could do something good. Three banelings for two would be a nice trade for Rico here. He's going to try and go for it. Can he get the connection that he needs? One goes off, two goes off, but no, two banings for just one. That's going to be very frustrating. Meanwhile, back up at home, Johnny Rico does have a couple of banings here. Kane, though, getting ready to move forward. He's got more banings waddling from every direction. The two lings for one baneling, of course. Good trade. Definitely something you're worthwhile looking at. He's still got the pressure coming in. Couple of defense banings being used here by Rico. The Queens and the Spine Caller down on the low ground. But no creep for that Spine Caller quite yet. But still, the Queen's doing a really nice job. Oh, picking quite a chunk of this off. Good transfuses going down, but Bailings are making their way up into the main. This is where Rico needs to be very careful. One, one lone Bailing is absolutely nothing to worry about. Kane, though, does manage to detonate it on the lava. That's a really good thing to go for, but of course, one Bailing does not kill drones. So hitting the drone line would have done no damage. Hitting the lava has managed to make sure that Rico's production capability has been severely hindered. However, Rico is busy getting down his own expand, uh, his own lair. Hasn't been seen yet by Kane that that tech up is coming, and that could make all of the difference moving forward. But Kane's still applying the pressure. Both players relatively low on the drone count, only at 27. But Johnny Rico, with the lair, with some more drones and the additional gas, is getting the tech advantage. However, Kane, with a Rotoron, may have the option to go for some kind of tier 1.5 push that is going to be absolutely devastating if Rico is unable to get that lair tech working in his favor. So definitely something to keep an eye out for. Rico going up to all four gases. Meanwhile, Kane, he's only just now taking his second gas, one of the main, one of the natural. Going to have a lot less gas, but a lot more lava and also a couple more drones. He's up at 32 drones to 28. Johnny Rico is going to be a bit mineral staff, but can get some great tech out. And Kane able to sneak a couple of speedlings up around here, but Johnny Rico, remember, does still have the banelings down. He's got them in a relatively nice position. Kane still not seeing the lair, which is now finished. The spire coming down for Rico. He's rushing up to Mutalisks, and if he's able to get them out before a massive roach flood comes, such as this, then he's going to be able to win the game. So now what it comes down to is can Rico, quite frankly, hold off this next push? If he's able to do it, he's going to be in a good spot. That's why he's getting down the next spine caller. He wants to make sure he's completely safe. Did Kane see that next spine? Yes, he did. These additional spines say my opponent is going mutilist. The reason it says that is because why else would they be investing all of that money into ground defense? The answer, there is no reason that you'd be getting that down, especially this early before this road shove has been seen. Rico's doing this purely because he knows if he holds on, he's going to be absolutely fine. He hasn't even seen too much. He's just seen the roaches starting to make their way out. And he knows with that that this push should get defended. He's trying to get so many more spine pullers. Seven more in total. Whole ton of bailings ready to start defending. Kane trying to move forward as quickly as he can. The roaches are making their way up. But these spine call is nearly done now. Johnny Rico banking up a good amount of gas. All he's got to do is hold this push off. Remember, and he's in an amazing spot. Down come the spine callers. And Kane is in a lot of trouble. He needs to try and break through as quickly as he can. But I just don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Especially with so many defensive bailings here for Rico. As long as the bailings detonations are good. And remember, two for any more than two. It's going to be a good trade like that. It's going to be good. Massive trade there. While the first wave of spine callers go down, will it be enough to squeeze? Trying to block up something he was getting through, but in come all of the bailings for Kane. They are going to do a devastating amount of damage. They're pushing in, trying to knock down as many spines as possible, but it's the main base where Kane can happily start moving up and into. Johnny Rico now rushing out a couple more speedlings. He needs quite a considerable amount more, though, but in comes Kane. The drone's getting pulled down towards an action. It's finally done. The additional speedlings about to pop. The bailing is the really concerning thing. Rico, he's trying to defend everywhere he can. He's moving more spine callers forward. He's trying to hold all of this off with the speedlings as best as possible. 
and all that bailing dancing with death could now definitely pick up a good number of those feelings but well the drones are able to escape none of them going down the roach is now surrounded and with the mutalisks hitting the field kane is going to be in a lot of trouble unless he can break rico imminently but of course rico's income has been massively hindered however those mutalisks are now hitting the field it may only be a couple of them but currently kane has nothing that shoots up the needle is coming in, the Baneling still trying to get some detonations, are able to kill a couple of surgeons and a couple of drones, but GG, Kane knows he's not going to be able to defend from this point on, and Johnny Rico will take the game just by getting the mutalisks out and able to hold off that big roach push. So, nice fun little ZVZ there, showing the advantages and disadvantages of teching quickly compared to getting out a lot of army quickly. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like the video, leave a cool comment and of course subscribe, plus Check out me on Twitter, at Maddles91, and of course on Twitch, because I'm going to start streaming to twitch.tv forward slash Maddles. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.